structures in 1957. In 1957, Chomsky published this little book, Syntactic Structures, and it almost imme immediately revolutionized the field. It had a profound influence on everyone who read it carefully, and the reason for this is the beauty of the analyses that Chomsky presented. He was able to show that there were patterns when it had just looked like there were many separate facts, and he was able to come up with very simple rules for explaining these patterns. Basically what Chomsky said was, is that your sights aren't set high enough. You're asking the wrong questions. You're not asking the most interesting questions. What you're, what you're asking is, well, we know language is a system, so how should we divide it up? Where should we draw the line in the word? Where should we draw the line in the sentence? What are the pieces? Chomsky said, let's ask a different question. Let's ask a much more ambitious question. Let's ask the question, what is a possible human language? What was so appealing about this analysis and what was so revolutionary about it is it showed that there's some process in your head, some rule, some pattern that you have abstractly, and you use this rule in producing sentences and in understanding sentences. That is, he uh, moved linguistics away from merely uh, gathering and investigating sentences that had already been produced and moved it towards the investigation of human potentiality. What kinds of sentences can you produce? What kinds of sentences can you understand? Once you say, what is a possible human language, in a way you're saying, what is a possible human being? How does, how does the human mind work? Uh, well, the most elementary property of human language that one can imagine uh, is that we can create new expressions which express new thoughts. Uh, so, for example, the sentences that I'm now producing, the uh, you may not have heard, uh, I may not have uh, uh, said before, maybe the new in the history of the human race. Here's something no one has ever said before. Toss that anchor over here. I have room for two or three more of them in my hip pocket. The point of a language is to be able to say things you never said before and never heard before and to understand things the first time you hear them uh, that have never been said before to your knowledge or maybe never been said before at all. Uh, but if you're going to be able to say and understand new things, you must have acquired something very general, a system. There perhaps, in English, there are about 40 sounds. The sounds get combined to form, oh, most people know 40,000 words, something of that sort. Swimming. Cacophony. Anti-disestablishmentarianism. Lunch. Words are built out of sounds, and there are a limited number of them. Sentences are built out of words, and there's no limit to the number of, of sentences that, that you can compose in a language. You could say that words are like atoms. The way atoms are in chemistry, as the basic building blocks, those are what the words are. They're fairly solid things, and you take these atoms and you put them together to make up the molecules or the sentences. I remember senator joseph mccarthy at one time saying that's the most unheard of thing ever heard of <laughs> you know, nobody could have invented that sentence before mccarthy spoke it it's really a deceptively simple system the genius of the system is that with a small number of words and this system of grammar you can make up an infinite number of sentences you can make up a sentence to fit any occasion and mommy 